When's the last time you had this much fun just off the interstate? Hello, Wonder Hussy here, standing inside a culvert on the Arizona, New Mexico state line. And you might be wondering why I'm hanging out in a culvert. Well, that's because this culvert has an amazing view. I came down here because there's supposed to be a very interesting rock formation on this mm, butte mesa. Not sure what you would call it behind me. I mean, you can see we are in some completely spectacular country. You can see why people travel from all over the place just to check this stuff out. Me, I'm driving down I-40 headed east to go visit my friend in Arkansas to watch the eclipse. And you know how it is when you're driving along Interstate 40, especially that part of Interstate 40 in Arizona. No offense to Arizona. Arizona has some staggering natural beauty. I mean, hello, the Grand Canyon. But Interstate 40 passes through, well, after you leave Flagstaff, it's pretty flat and it's pretty desolate. And yeah, there's the meteor crater, but there really isn't any kind of landscape until you get to the New Mexico border. I guess that's how you know you're coming up on New Mexico the landscape suddenly becomes amazing. I think the state motto of New Mexico is land of enchantment. And I've actually spent a fair amount of time exploring New Mexico. And I have to say, I agree with that motto. Not only does it have spectacular natural scenery, but there's also a ton of hot springs. And there's a lot of really cool old abandoned buildings. Basically, New Mexico is sort of like a Disneyland for me. And so I was super excited when I finally made it here to the state line, because now I can start being enchanted. Okay, you can see I parked my car there at the side of a lonely highway, rolling through this spectacular country. But I got out to stretch my legs and check out this formation up on the bluff ahead of us. And you might be wondering, well, gee, Wander Hussy, what's so special about this formation? Well, they call it the tea kettle because apparently, if you zoom in on it, it kind of looks like a giant tea kettle. <laughs> I guess that's what passes for entertainment in these parts, a rock shaped like a giant tea kettle. I mean, you can see why they call it the tea kettle. It kind of looks like, or like a teapot, you know, there's the body and there's a spout sticking up. I can actually think of another name I might've given to this rock formation, but that's just me. Anyway, folks around here apparently call it the tea kettle. And how do I know this? Well, I was looking at Google maps, trying to find interesting things along the way to stop and stretch my legs and look at. You know, like I said, I-40 gets mighty monotonous. I got to drive all the way to Arkansas. That's like another thousand miles. So I figure whenever I come on something interesting, I ought to get out of the car and take a look. And so there hasn't been much for the past couple hours, mostly Native American souvenir shops and stuff like that. But now that I'm in New Mexico, or almost in New Mexico, I think that's going to change. I guess technically we are still in Arizona and so is the tea kettle, but we're right near the state line. So I'm going to get back in my car and keep on a rolling, crossing not only the state line into New Mexico, but also changing time zones. I'm about to lose an hour because we're going into mountain time. So that means even though I think it's only one o'clock, guess what? It's already two o'clock. And that means I'm late again, so I'd better hurry. Okay, we're here at the Chief Yellow Horse 
trading post. I guess it's one of those classic Route 66 roadside souvenir stands, and they're leaning into that shtick pretty heavily. Look at this badass old truck I just parked next to. Love this color. I guess this is an old Ford F-250, I think. Yeah, look at that. Parked in front of this magnificent, I guess, ancient cliff dwelling or some kind of giant cave that I guess maybe the Native Americans in this area used to take shelter in. Kind of reminds me of when I went to Canyon de Chez. Very similar. Uh, except for the Triceratops standing guard out front. Okay, speaking of Native Americans, uh, well, you might be wondering, who is this Chief Yellow Horse? Well, I guess the original Chief Yellow Horse was a baseball player for the Pittsburgh Pirates back in the 1921 to 1922 season. And from what I read online, he was a Pawnee from Oklahoma. So I don't know how this place out here on the border of Arizona and New Mexico came to have his name, but you can see it's called Chief Yellow Horse the Third now. So I guess it's still being run by his descendants. Anyway, if what I read online is accurate, uh, the state line supposedly runs right through this gift shop. So let's go in the gift shop and see if we can hop across from Arizona into New Mexico. Oh yeah, look at that. Yeah, there's a picture of the chief right there. This was his house. This was, oh, this is where he lived? Yeah. Oh, how about that? Chief Yellow Horse lived in this building that we're in right now. Let me zoom out. Wow, far out. Yeah, pretty cool. Huh? Are you his descendant? I am. Oh, you are? What's I your, are. do you mind if I uh, introduce you on camera? Hi, my name's Scott Yellow Horse. And you're Chief Yellow Horse the third? I'm the third. That was my dad, Chief Yellow Oh, that was your dad? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he was... There's a picture of the grandpa and then grandma. Wow, look at that throne. That's amazing. Isn't that something? That sure is. Yep, what kind is, of horns are those? That's a Texas Longhorn. Texas Longhorn throne. Yeah. Oh, man, I need a throne like that. <laughs> well, you could take that one if you like. Yeah, I know, but what are you asking for it? <laughs> um, we're not asking a lot. Oh, okay. I want to cross the state line, man. Right here's the line. Yeah, I know. I see that. I was, I've been yeah. in Arizona all day. I'm ready for New Mexico. Oh, really? You're headed east? Yeah, I'm going to watch the dang eclipse. <laughs> okay, I just learned that this building that we're in is called a Hogan. It's a traditional Native American building. And the door faces east because all good things come from the east. That's right. Well, cool. I'm going to look around your awesome gift shop. Yeah, look around. Check it out. Yeah, we got to find a souvenir. Wow, look at all this stuff. I love this. You can trust the federal government. Just ask an Indian. Wow, it's like a little bit of everything here. Tapes, CDs, books. Oh, wow, cool. You can walk right out into this cliff dwelling. Wow, imagine having to climb, I guess, a ladder to get all the way back up in there every night. Pretty freaking cool. Okay, wow, I don't know, man. According to the sign in there, the chief yellow horse who played for the Pittsburgh Pirates has nothing to do with this place. I guess this place is named after a guy named Juan Yellow Horse, who was actually born William Beasley in 1930. And I guess he adopted the last name Yellow Horse after his mother, who was a Navajo. Kinda confusing. Anyway, let's get back in the car and keep on a cruising to the next interesting roadside attraction here in the land of enchantment. Okay, we're at the next point of interest in my book, and that is the Continental Divide. And you can see they put up a real fancy historic marker right here at the side of, well, I guess I-40 is over there. I think this is old Route 66, but it tells you that we're at 7,295 feet in elevation. And because it's the Continental Divide, I guess this is the point where water flows to the east and to the west. So in other words, I guess if there was a stream or a creek here, we might be able to see the water would be flowing that way on that side and this way on this side. I don't know, I just thought it was kind of an interesting thing to stop at. And it also happens to be right in front of this amazing old abandoned 
Uh, I don't know if this was, I guess, some kind of gas station or something. Oh, I'd love to go in there and poke around, but unfortunately, it's very heavily posted, no trespassing, private property. So I don't want to run afoul of anyone in this part of the country since I'm not from around here, and I sure don't want to end up in the New Mexico jail. But it's okay, I got another point marked on my map, just down the road a piece, where I just might be able to get my abandoned building fix the legal way. Okay, hold up. It's the next day. I spent the night in Albuquerque, and now I'm continuing east, and there's a spot I want to check out just to the east of Albuquerque, right here on old Route 66. That's right, I'm actually driving on, I guess, a segment of old Route 66 that, according to Google Maps, has kind of a fun, quirky, interactive thing going on. Okay, supposedly any minute now, I'll be coming upon a stretch of old Route 66 that has grooves cut into it to make it one of them there musical roads. That's right, a musical road. Okay, I made a video years ago at a musical road in Lancaster, California that played the William Tell Overture when you drove over it at a certain speed. Uh, I can't remember what song this road supposedly plays, but I guess we're about to find out. I did actually hear it. I don't know if you guys could. It's playing America the Beautiful from sea to shining sea. I'm gonna go back and do it one more time. Listen real close. <laughs> I don't know, I could hear it. I'm not sure you could. Sorry if that was boring. I get off on weird stuff like that. I will say, I think the musical road in Lancaster is a bit more impressive. Uh, anyway, I guess I'm just gonna keep on rolling to the next interesting thing I have pinned on my map along I-40 as I travel across the land of enchantment. Hey, I gotta keep myself amused somehow. Okay, now we're at a place called the Blue Hole. Okay, apparently it's this super duper deep hole in the ground full of 62 degree water that I guess it's very popular with scuba divers. You can see there's divers swimming around down there. Well, that's because this blue hole is, it's kind of like the devil's hole that I made a video about out near Death Valley. This super deep system of caves full of water that I guess they haven't ever actually even mapped the depths of. I mean, they've tried to. Uh, I think a diver got lost down there in like 1976 and so the state police dove down as deep as they could but they kept going into all these different little chambers and areas and the walls and the ceilings were collapsing and it was too dangerous so they had to give up but look at this it's basically like a little municipal swimming area anyone who wants can come out here and go swimming or diving in this amazing deep Cenote. I guess that's the Spanish word for like a deep underground cavern full of water that the top somehow erodes away and it becomes exposed. A cenote. You maybe have seen videos of the beautiful cenotes down in Mexico. Well, New Mexico has its own cenote right here. Man, as beautiful as it is, I don't know, man. I sort of feel like I should at least go in since I'm here. But oh my God, the water's only 62 degrees. That's like 43 degrees colder than I like to go in normally. You know, I'm more of a hot springer. But I happened to run into this guy up here who said I should go in. He recognized me from my channel and he said he thinks I should go swimming. You think I should go in here? Yes, I should. Okay. You know what? I have my bathrobe and my bikini in the car. Uh, all right, if I start drowning, will you save me? Sure. Okay, can you swim? Sure. 
Okay, all right, thank you. Okay, I just want to make sure that I can go in here legally. I mean, it says diving permits required, but I'm not diving. And then over here, it just says swim at your own risk, which I think is absolutely wild. They trust people to go in here. <laughs> I mean, when's the last time you ever went to a public facility like this? Like, you know, I just had to pay $29 to go in that meteor crater. Meanwhile, this awesome cenote is free and anybody who wants to driving along I-40 can just get off and take a dip. Boy, I feel like I have to now. Oh wait, look, before I go in, here's a map of the blue hole. I guess, I think it's only like 90 feet across at the top, but it gets wider at the bottom. It's sort of bell shaped. But then yeah, all these caverns and chambers go way down. I think they graded that off so you can't go any deeper down because that's where that diver was lost. Oh, I'm not planning to dive anyway. Okay, I'm gonna go get my bikini and my bathrobe and I'm just gonna I might float around in there just for a second oh my god it's gonna be so cold okay got my bikini on got my bathrobe on got my floaty inflated I guess I'm gonna go take a dip in the beautiful blue hole of Santa Rosa New Mexico <laughs> All right, I'm in the cenote. So here I am floating in the blue hole. How about this? It's actually not that bad. Uh, I mean, it's certainly no hot spring, but you know, I think it's about 72 degrees out here today. So the water actually feels kind of nice. Hopefully my floaty don't spring a leak because I don't think my cell phone it's waterproof. I just wanted to try to paddle, you know, all the way to the other side and see what's going on over here. I guess these balls are in here, these buoys for like divers. Maybe they mark like the deepest points you can dive in. I'm not sure why else they would be in here. I've got the biggest balls of them all. Oh my God, I can't believe I'm out here in broad daylight talking to myself while I'm floating around. <laughs> and a cactus floaty. Apparently I have no shame at all anymore. It's cool they have like all these little diving platforms all around the edges. If I was a braver person, I would have climbed up top there and just jumped right in. But I don't want to get my hair wet. Ah, uh, look how beautiful the patterns of light reflected on these rocks are. This is super cool. The only thing that would make this cooler is if it was 40 degrees warmer. But if this was 40 degrees warmer, everyone and their Aunt Sally would be out here. I'm here on a Wednesday afternoon, like three o'clock in the afternoon. I guess it's an unpopular time because I have the whole dang hole to myself. Okay, look, we made it into the cave, sort of the overhang here on the far edge of the pool. Wow, these reflections are trippy. I mean, it almost looks like some kind of computer graphic. Boy, it's a good thing I don't have my vaporizer or a bunch of mushrooms or I'd never leave this overhang. Ah. And it's interesting, you can see besides the overhang, there's also an outcropping below. There's like this lip, this ring of limestone or whatever, kind of like a bench going all the way around the edges of this beautiful cenote. Okay, as much fun as I'm having paddling around this amazing blue hole all by myself. I guess I better paddle back over to the stairs, get out and get back in my car because believe it or not, there's still more stuff I wanna check out in the land of enchantment. Actually, before I leave, I'm gonna take one more look at this sign. Okay, it says it's 81 feet deep, but I think that's just that main first chamber. You know, if you go all the way down into the bottom of those caves, it looks like it goes to almost 200 feet. Yikes. Oh, and then it says diameter 60 feet. I thought it was 90 feet. Diameter 60 feet, outflow 3,000 gallons per minute. Water temperature 61 degrees. Oh, according to Wikipedia, it was 62. Anyway, before I leave, I do wanna climb up here to the top and just look down into the depths of the blue hole from that uh, diving platform, AKA the platform I would have jumped off of if I wasn't such a wuss. But you know, if you're braver than me and you wanna come here, well, then you can hike all the way up here to the top 
and come all the way up on top of this little diving platform. Let's go down to the edge. Oh my God, what if I fall? That would not be good, man. I have a lot of video on this phone that I don't want to lose. Anyway, you could jump right off here, down, down, down into the depths of the blue hole. Yeah, it's interesting. From up here, we can see the buoys are attached to these PVC rectangles. I don't know. I guess it's some kind of diving training thing. They do. A lot of divers come here and do training. Absolutely fascinating. Okay, back on the road. Okay, so far on our journey across New Mexico, we've seen astounding natural beauty, we've seen quirky roadside attractions, and we even got to take a dip in one of the beautiful swimming holes. But there's one more aspect that really makes New Mexico the land of enchantment, and that is abandoned places. That's right, there are a of abandoned buildings, abandoned ranches, and abandoned ghost towns in New Mexico. And I'm standing right in the middle of one of them. This right here is called Curvo. Okay, it's spelled like Cuervo, the tequila brand, but I'm pretty sure it's pronounced Curvo, because this ain't Mexico. This is New Mexico. Anyway, Curvo sits right off the side of Interstate 40. And I guess it used to be one of those charming little towns along old Route 66, like in the movie Cars, when they build the interstate, all those little cute towns that were posted up along Route 66, kind of dried up and withered away because now everybody just blows by on the interstate, nobody stops anymore. Well, in Curvo, it was even worse because they built the dang interstate right through the middle of town. You might be able to see on the other side of the highway, there's more abandoned buildings. I guess instead of bypassing the town altogether, the federal surveyors decided to lay the highway right through the middle of town, which I guess in retrospect was even worse for business. Now, I don't know for sure what's going on here in Curvo. It looks to me like most of the buildings are long abandoned, but I did see some no trespassing private property signs uh, on one of the houses over there. And it does look like there's still a few people living here. And there's a pickup truck pulled over at the side of the road just over there. So I don't want to step on anyone's toes. Again, I ain't from around here. And the last thing I want to do is piss off a bunch of new Mexicans, especially this close to Texas. But I'm pretty sure it's okay to just sort of look at the ruins from the road here. I mean, it's very evocative and very scenic. You know, I was complaining earlier in the video about how flat and monotonous Eastern Arizona was. And then I came into New Mexico and all these dramatic cliffs and mesas and rock formations. Well, all of that just sort of dissipated uh, as I get closer to the high plains. And it's been pretty flat, but Curvo here is sort of nestled at the base of this beautiful red bluff. In fact, if I zoom in, you might be able to see they got the name of the dang town written right on the hill there. I think this town was founded in 1901 and by its peak in 1940, when it was a Route 66 travel stop, basically, I think there was like 300 people living here. But today I'd be surprised if there's more than a handful. I mean, it looks like there are some people fixing up a place uh, over there. And then there's a like a mechanics garage on the other side of the highway. So maybe four or five folks hanging on here. Although I wouldn't be surprised if it was you know, like hippie artists. This would be the perfect place for hippie artists to take over. Oh God, that's probably the last thing they want out here. This is God fearing country. They ain't got time for none of them hippies. Look at this old car. What do you guys think that was? Let's see. Oh, it looks like it was a Chevelle. How about that? Look at that, plain as day. Okay, I didn't see any private property, no trespassing signs on this house that I parked in front of. So to get back to the car, let's just walk through this old abandoned farmhouse. You ain't scared, are ya? I mean, this is one of those classic 
clapboard high plains farmhouses that people had to flee during the Dust Bowl. Look at that, you can see right inside the wall how it was built, it was made out of adobe. Look at that, it's red mud. Wow, same as the red mud that bluff above town is made out of. Well, folks had to use the materials they had at hand. It wasn't like there was a lot of trees out here. And what there were, they used for the uh, framing and the floorboards. Anyway, just a small couple few room farmhouse. Unfortunately, full of detritus now. Good thing I'm wearing my boots. <laughs> Man, I'm going to Texas tomorrow. I had to wear my boots. I heard they wouldn't even let you across the state line in flip-flops. Anyway, uh, over here on the right. Oh, wow, yeah, look at this old stove. Real old stove. I don't know, I guess maybe this was the kitchen. Amazing that this is right at the side of I-40 and no one has stolen this old stove. Maybe that's not old enough to be valuable. And then what's on the other side? Oh, here's another room. Look at that. Just a big old beautiful room in a beautiful little old farmhouse sitting at the side of a big ugly interstate. Anyway, speaking of the interstate, I guess I might as well get back on the road and keep on a rolling to my next destination. I'm actually going to spend the night in the town of Tukumkari. I have some friends who are also traveling to watch the eclipse and we're gonna be in Tukumkari on the same night. So I told them I'd meet up and have a drink or two. And all this talk about Curvo really has me jonesing for a margarita. But I sure hope you've enjoyed traveling across New Mexico with me and we've seen it all. Natural beauty, quirky roadside attractions, beautiful swimming holes and abandoned ghost towns. Now you know why they call it the land of enchantment.